Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, I was heading from the floating parliament to the Royal Society to try to complete that race quest for the Rochester Club. But along the way, I finally found Brabazon Workworld. I have a lot to do here. I know there's a bunch of quests, and I'm sure non-quest stuff to do as well. So forget the race. It's Workworld time. I've arrived at the bit between... The officials of Brabazon never bothered to formally name this waypoint. Captains dock here to pick up goods or deliver workers. It's not a place to linger because of the proximity to the accelerated time of the work world. Oh, do they accelerate all the time in the work world to make the work go faster, increase productivity? Oh, Jesus. A bit between. Perhaps on Workworld, the first Workworld to be established in Albion. Hmm. I don't... As far as I know, there aren't any other completed Workworlds. We did hear a reference to a failed Workworld in one of the tech, like flavor text things as we were going by. I feel like it might have been over near the Royal Society, like somewhere over here. They tried to establish one, but it failed around the crags. I wonder if there's been others, too. Working here, debtors can escape prison. They remain till their debts are repaid and a ticket away has been funded. The primary industry is that of hours processing, which has the side effect of accelerating time on the work world's surface. Hmm. So the accelerated time is just a side effect. It's not like, it's, it's not intended specifically. The dock is between Brabazon Workworld and Little Nice, where the more privileged overseers reside. But the, the dock is, for captain's sake, nearer Little Nice than the Workworld. Unexpected aging would deter even the greediest captain from arriving. Oh, yeah, accelerated time, that wouldn't be great. <laughs> Oh boy, there's a lot to do. There's so much to do. I just want to go back here. So I think we already pretty much knew what the work world was about, just from all the little things we've heard about it, plus the name, and also the fact that we have... Remember the quest we got, which feels like a million years ago, from the... Uh, I don't remember their name. Um, it was a person that... The, oh fuck, I don't even remember. The bookkeeper? The bookkeeper at uh, at London? They introduced us to the philanthropic, uh, like, philanthropic something, rich person, who uh, wanted us to pick up somebody, basically, help somebody escape from the work world. So, yeah, obviously not a good place. But it explicitly says, they remain till their debts are repaid and a ticket away has been funded. Where debtors can escape prison. Yeah, this place is really fucked up. And both I and Elizabeth want to blow the whole fucking thing up. So, hope that's an option. <laughs> mm. Travel to Little Nice. Join a tour. Once you join the tour, you will not be able to leave till the end. That sounds ominous. The workers are not yet so unhappy that they will rise up. Well, I think I want them to do that. Uh, is this a different type of tour? Wait, there's a... There's a bunch of tours. Uh, let's read the descriptions, see how they're different. The first one, with the right forms, you can requisition hours. The tour guide can use those to ensure you remain safe. Ah, protect me from the rapid aging. Minister stamp permit. Or this one, which takes a barrel of unseasoned hours. A neatly printed sign offers Tours of Brabazon witness the worthy work of Albion's unfortunates, blessed with toil. Near it, several well-dressed personages are gathered in a tight group. Occasional guffaws rise above the chatter. Blessed with toil? Bullshit. Or another one that takes... What does it take? 
Well, this doesn't explicitly say it, but that's the picture for a savage secret. The overseer requires information. No one can be sentenced to the work world without there first being evidence of a crime. Yeah, so, I mean, this is always just, obviously just explicit slave labor. Attempt to converse with an overseer. Hmm. Deliver the sequencer's care package. I forgot that we even got that as a quest. This tour we can't do. For Starshine, requirements might be waived. Oh, Starshine is... Um, it's a type of contraband that I haven't encountered yet. Let's deliver the sequencer's care package. When you explain the nature of your delivery to the overseers, some appropriately downtrodden workers are summoned. The summoned workers are exquisitely downtrodden. The overseers take vocal pride in having gone an extra mile on your behalf and carefully selected the most miserable of a bad bunch. Jesus Christ. The amassed laborers shuffle their feet, apparently expecting a trick. Finally, a, a filth-faced man steps forward, ducking his head in greeting, and fumbles the package open. He picks out one of the bowtie manuals and stares at it for a while. A series of emotions pass very visibly over his face. Finally, he inclines his head and thanks you without inflection. I forgot, like, what is this even supposed to be? I don't remember what the quest was even about. But now we have to return to the sequencer of the Clockwork Sun. Hope we didn't just set something bad into motion, because I don't even know what we just did. Oh, let's read the description for Little Niceties. A precarious shop sells the finest crockery in Albion, made from authentic Brabazon China. And at a rear door, captains can also purchase fuel mined among the dismal Stygian roots of the work world. So I guess it's either speak with an overseer or... Oh, little nice. Go to little nice, speak with an overseer, or one of the three ways of joining a tour. Let's join a tour. I don't know if it matters which one. Like if the different things will happen or if it's simply a matter of what resource I want to use up. Let's use up my barrel of unseasoned hours because that's the thing that matters the least out of all these. I suppose. Yeah, let's do this one. We run this tour at cost, you know, says the overseer who collects your contribution. She hands the group over to the tour leader who shepherds you all into a side room. The tour leader hands out thick cloaks to keep off the smut. The group covers itself. The hood lends one woman with her hair coiled up high on her head an awkward shape and unexpected height. Satisfied, the tour leader begins a briefing. Receive a carriage clock. Oh, is that to make sure the time isn't being accelerated? Basically our Geiger counter. <laughs> if time starts going real fast, get the hell out. The tour leader presents you each with a carriage clock. As you know, time in the work worlds move, moves more velocitously yeah, I pronounced that right, philosophically than it does outside. In order to exempt you from the effects, we've had looms spin a fold of external hours to cover the tour. Please carry these carriage clocks. They will show you how much time your protection will last for. Please don't stray. He pauses for emphasis. It is crucial that you stay with the tour. If your time runs out, every minute it takes for us to realize could be hours for you. There's a flurry of anxious whispers. Once it has subsided, the group is led onto the work world. I'm guessing I'm going to be tempted off the path. Your group is accompanied by two overseers. The overseer bringing up the rear is a woman in her early 30s. She checks her carriage clock compulsively. Admire the rugs. Our first stop on the tour is the Brabazon Rug Weaving Workshop. The overseer beams and gestures for you to enter a building larger than any other on the street. A tableau. An attractive young worker leaps up to greet you. This workshop was built thanks to the generos generosity of Lady... Something that's censored? 
Lady what? Please admire our beautiful handcrafted rugs and weavings, exported for sale in London. Workers here gain skills that can support them for the rest of their days. The group... Oh, God. I want to respond to that right away, but let's get through the rest of this. The group of workers nods and smiles at you. One stands to better display their work. Another thanks you for your visit. The youth. The youth is the last one to see you out. Perhaps I'll see you elsewhere in Albion. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I'm sure these workers are just so proud of their work. Totally not being required to put on a good show and look all nice. Look at how hard we worked. We're gaining good life skills. Like, this, this isn't a fucking vocational school. They're slave labor. Admire the rugs or smile at the workers. Uh, I mean, fuck the rug. Who gives a shit about the rugs? Smile at the workers? A simple act of human warmth. They smile back, and their smiles are as stiff and rehearsed as the line the youth delivered. The tour moves on. Your carriage clock ticks away. You have plenty of time. Moving on from the rug workshop, the tour is directed towards a glass factory. <laughs> the way I said that make it sound, makes it sound like the factory itself is made out of glass. It's a glass factory. A factory that makes glass. The air is yellow with smog. Visit the glass workers. A fascinating aspect of Brabazon is the mutually beneficial relationship between the place and its workers. Go fuck yourself. The overseer makes a sweeping gesture. Make note of this smog. I'll explain more inside. A demonstration. The building you enter is heated by vast furnaces and ovens. Workers are blowing molten glass. The smog prevents much of the sun's heat from reaching Brabazon. Without factories such as this, Brabazon would freeze. The workers keep the factories alive. The factories heat the work world, and it becomes a pleasant place to live. Here, work enriches life. Go fuck yourself. Several of the group coo in admiration. One man boasts about his Brabazon glass collection. A young lady in gaudy finery turns to you. My parents paid for the main furnace to ensure that the poor would never go without. What did you fund? Go fuck yourself, too. for the main furnace to ensure that the poor would never go without. Uh, are they under the impression that if they buy goods from the Brabazon work world that like the people making it are going to see some of the profits? Like I mean I know the idea is theoretically you work until your debts are paid off but like assuming they even give you anything near a fair payment for your work, which I'm sure they don't. <laughs> Buying anything, like, they're not going to see the end result. The worker isn't going to see any of that money. No way. Confess you're not one of the donors, or declare you paid for the roof over your very heads. Confess you're not one of the donors. Your locomotive captain, traversing the wilderness, defeating horrors, delivering goods. But perhaps one day you will engage in charitable endeavors. Again, I don't think it's actually really charity. I'm just enriching the overseers and all the everybody but the workers that actually make the stuff. The young lady blushes. So dangerous, so romantic. That sounds much more fun. Is it difficult? Perhaps my parents will buy me a locomotive. She seems bored for much of the rest of the tour. It seems the thrills of your profession outweigh the charm of inherited virtue. You still have a lot of time, and I gain two salon stewed gossip. Yeah, okay, if your parents just, like, buy you a locomotive, and you're just like, well, I don't know anything about anything, I'm just gonna go explore the skies, they're gonna end up dead within a week. The tour moves on through the upper layer of Brabazon towards a refinery that belches heat like a dying dragon. This entire place just infuriates me and Elizabeth. <laughs> God, I hate this place. Peer through the window at the hour refiners. Please line up here. Uh, that's it. The overseer indicates alongside a long, low window. It has been recently cleaned to a shine. 
Inside, hard-working souls refine raw hours imported from the Reach. After this process, they may be spun in hour looms and put to use. He taps his carriage clock as an example. The refinery is a clamoring, roaring space of long benches, sweating workers, and rolling smoke. The overseer explains, The geodes containing the hours are cracked open, and the fibrous strands of salt-like time are separated with small chisels and saws. Men and women do the former work, children the... L of course this place has child labor. So, wait, why, why do they have child labor? Does, I'm trying to think of the implication of that. Because this is a place where you work off your debts, does that imply that these children have chosen to work here instead of going to prison? That these children have, were sentenced to prison? Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Men and women do the former work, children the latter. The filaments are then passed through a series of furnaces to remove impurities, which are in turn brushed away in an indigo slush. The slush is raked to ensure not even a stray minute is lost. Once the seconds and minutes and hours are extracted, they're seasoned, taken from a very high temperature to a very low one and back. After this, the tangled clumps, the color of the sky just before dawn or after dusk, are carted and wound onto spools in long filaments. The overseer raps sharply on the window. As one, the nearby workers look up, smile, and wave. Uh, there's actually a lot here that's interesting. The whole children thing is interesting. I didn't realize they were using child labor. Uh, but this is actually the most detail it's ever gone into about the physical construction of these geodes that contain time. You know, I didn't really know much about them other than they're geodes, they can be cracked open, the time is inside of them, that's about it. But yeah, um, fibrous strands of salt-like time. So that's what time looks like, apparently. Also, this just clarified something that I was totally misunderstanding. Um, you know how the hours that I can get are called unseasoned I thought that was referring to like flavor maybe that sounds weird but I mean this sort of universe it doesn't seem that strange really to literally season like with salt and pepper and whatever time to make it more palatable or something I was thinking flavor the whole time but actually what they're talking about taking from a very high temperature to a very low one and back that's yeah, the temperature seasoning, like seasoning a, a cast iron pan. Rubbing it in oil and taking it to a high temperature, and then back down. I didn't realize it was a temperature thing. After this, the tangled clumps. So tangled time? Color of the sky just before dawn or after dusk. Hmm. So the seasoned hours. I don't think I can actually get them. I've only seen the unseasoned hours. It sounds like the seasoned stuff, the good stuff, is pretty much exclusively used for hour looms. Mm, hurry off after the rest of the tour or linger and watch after the tour moves on. What do they do when they haven't got an audience? Okay, this is where I'm being tempted off the path. And you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm sure everything is going to change. Linger and watch. Seconds after your group has moved on, a worker in the middle of the front row leaps from her seat. She pulls on the striped blazer that had been hidden on her lap and dashes from the room. She's replaced by another, gray and exhausted. No one looks up. Your carriage clock ticks cheerily. You've used nearly half your time. Hmm. So I think the warning about how you can't leave until the tour is done is basically telling you that you use up time faster when you stay away from the tour or stray away from the tour rather and so if you get to the point where you've used up all of your time and the tour is still going on you're gonna have to stay and then that's going to do something bad 
Leaving the refinery behind, you turn through the streets towards the ceaseless ring of hammers. A short walk, then you enter a dusty yard. Watch the rock breaking. The tour leader adopts a noble frown. Unfortunately, not all work on Brabazon can be creatively fulfilling. We also produce raw components like gravel and aggregates. You've looped back to a yard near the bit between. The second overseer is already there. Men and women, hard with muscle, bright with sweat, are breaking rocks with sledgehammers. They wear vests and breeches, with cloth masks to keep out the worst of the dust. We equip our workers with safety gear, just in case prolonged exertion in this air might prove unpleasant. As you can see, the regular exercise ensures that they're strong and healthy. Many leave Brabazon with athletic inclinations and pursue fitness as a profession. Go fuck yourself. A stout gentleman with a monocle sidles up to you. This whole place is just marvelous, eh? Get busy while paying off debts. Give a new skills and education. Simply marvelous. Yeah, can I throw this person to like a chipper shredder thing? Agree or equivocate? No, state that you're... Mm. Hold on. Do I want to be secret with my disgust with this place or just be open about it? Mm. I'm going to be open about it. State that you're repulsed by the whole thing and you've had enough of this farce of a tour. The man frowns. You're wrong, of course. He nods sagely. Yes, they must spend some of their years here, but what would they do with those years otherwise? Squander them, suffer, and die. His expression is condescending. Better the improving conditions of honest work, don't you think? You refrain from punching him in the smile. Your carriage clock ticks. Your carriage clock's ticks are loud. You've used up half your time. Come on, come on. The overseer is gesturing at you angrily. We can't waste another moment. We have to leave. Now. Complete the tour. It's important we return in plenty of time, so I'm afraid we'll have to end the tour here. The lead overseer circles the group, shepherding the huddle through the doors back to the bit between. The second overseer takes a head count. A poor one, for she double counts twice before giving up. Nevertheless, she signals her partner to go ahead. I hope you appreciated our little tour, and we shall pass your thanks on to the works of Brabazon, sure. Perhaps when they've paid off their debts, you'll see them again. Uh, yeah, sure. The overseer shakes the hands of the most prominent donors. Of course, this entire endeavor is thanks to your generosity, he murmurs to them. While the group preens, he collects the carriage clocks. I'm just trying to wrap my head around how disgusting this is. Okay, so slave labor, child labor, forcing the workers to look like they're happy for the sake of the tour, whole place being funded by rich assholes who think they're doing something good and think they're, like, donating to the poor, being generous to these people by funding this system that keeps them oppressed? <laughs> Hmm. The overseer who takes your spent carriage clock draws you aside. You're a skyfarer, aren't you? We've need for someone uh, without official connections to the governor to help us with a delicate matter. Listen to a request. We need someone who isn't one of the sponsors. Espionage. There are unsavory individuals on Brabazon Workworld. They... Inveigle? Yeah, it's inveigle. Means to persuade someone to do something by means of deception or flattery. They inveigle others to do their work so that they might have the time to plot. They're fomenting unrest. He shakes his head. It won't do. It just makes the other workers unhappy. Next time, see if you can sneak away from the tour. I hear their leader is looking for outside assistance. <laughs> Thanks for the inside information, buddy. Good to know. He winces. For once, time is on their side. They have so long to plan relative to us. If you hear anything, pass it to me. I'll be around here. 
Yeah, they just shot themselves in the foot. They don't realize who they're talking to. Mm, so... They're trying to get others to do their work so they have time to plot. And because they're under accelerated time, they have a lot of time to plot relative to the people outside. It's good. Suggest he does it himself. You're a visitor to this place. What the people do here is none of your concern. Tell him to go to the blazes. Make no promise. Except with apparent delight. Mm. This is a little bit hard, because now I'm, once again, wondering, do I want to be really honest with how I feel about this place, or... I don't want to be cut off, is the thing. I don't want to be cut off. I'll just... I'll just make no promises. Just so I don't piss him off. You won't reject him outright. Is he offering anything in return? Will he make it worth your while? Thank you. I wasn't hoping for anything more definite. He smiles, but it's not a happy one. I'll be putting a case to the governor. I'll make sure you're paid for any information that helps us quell unrest. Helps us keep the workers happy. He shakes your hand. Thank you. Come back to me if you hear anything. I'll be around. So I guess I should go back to the tour and try to sneak away to see if I can find the leader. Do I want to go to a little nice? Speak with the governor? I kind of want to kill a fucking governor. Let's attempt to converse with an overseer. Yeah, just see what happens. Few are willing to stop for mere conversation. Those that do will only linger at the little nice end of the tunnel. It's safer. A middle-aged man pushes a hand truck of crates from Brabazon to the docking area. The overseer beside him adds her weight to assist. You hear snatches of their conversation. Mother, stop helping. You'll be made to join us. The woman's laugh is high and nervous. Something, something, twice my own age, and you want me to stay away? She sees you and is instantly formal. I'm sorry, Captain. These goods are allotted to another locomotive. Let's go to Little Nice. A governor of Brabazon Workworld resides in the picturesque village at the far end of the bit between. Thick double doors separate the bit between from Little Nice. The fresh air of this pretty village is in sharp contrast to that near the dock. Little Nice is entirely charming. It's populated with carefully unique houses, painted in a curated array of colors. Overseers and striped blazers tend the topiary and maintain the paintwork. Behind a water feature, bustling with cherubs, or cherubs, cherubs? Cherubs, is a cottage with an out of place little tower. This is the home of the governor of Brabazon. Hmm, this is a quest related thing up here. Quest thing. Converse with a governor. Recline on a bench. Port report. Listen to the governor's request. Man, there's a lot to do. Let's get a port report. The Brabazon work world is one of several, but it is preeminent among them. As a major industrial center, it is of interest to many. The overseers here work hard to ensure Little Nice remains perfect, from the freshly painted fence curly cues to the newly mown grass of the lawn. It's hard to get a sense of what's going on in Brabazon from your current curated surroundings. The overseers themselves are no use. They must have been briefed. Each gives you clearly sanitized information. You only have to speak to four before you hear a, rep a repetition. You'll have to go down to the work world itself to learn anything true about Brabazon. You cannot get a report on Brabazon Work World from Little Nice. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Because they're just feeding you bullshit. Yeah. Let's just go down the list. Deliver the chaperone's request. 
So, just in case you've forgotten about this, which I almost have, a chaperone at Perdurance asked you to deliver a bequest here in order to reduce the term her family needs to serve at Brabazon. The governor's staff handled this sort of thing. If I remember right, didn't they give me their eye or something? It was like a jewel or something like that? You're directed to a modest desk in a confined office in a shabby corner of the mansion. A brisk secretary greets you and offers you tea. A formality, not a genuine offer. The chaperone's jeweled eye is heavy in your pocket. Deposit it or keep it and cover your tracks. Hell no, deposit it. The secretary seems disappointed. Time is more valuable than coin here. She examines the artificial eye critically. We'll have to get it professionally assayed, of course. Its market value will determine the amount of time by which service can be reduced. At that point, the residents in question will have to decide how the reduction will be divided among them. If a dispute occurs, the cost of legal resolution will be deducted from the value of the bequest. She drops the eye into a drawer. We'll take care of it. She completes and stamps an elaborate series of forms, then hands them to you. They're labyrinthian and baroque, exactly the sort of thing you could use to befuddle some overworked junior official. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do anything with it. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just pocket the coin and do literally nothing. Gained two ministry... Ministry? Ministry stamped permits and 250 experience. Whoa, that was... That was weird. It took me all the way back to the bit between. Okay, can I go back? Yeah. Let's converse with the governor. The governor runs Brabazon. In the absence of more direct control from London, he is all-powerful here. Bring gossip to take tea with the governor. He'll let you keep what you can't consume. Two salons do gossip. Oh, they gave me a caddy of dried tea. Ah, welcome. He stands to shake your hand. Always good to see a locomotive captain. Good to know the trade routes are still running. Do you smoke? He rummages in his desk. Oh, uh, it appears I'm all out. My apologies. Wow, what a great conversation. <laughs> hmm. Recline on a bench. Admire the topiary. Consider the immaculate lawn. This will lower terror a little. 16%. Down to 8%. That's not bad. The grass is immaculately cut. The hedges are trimmed. Stars burn silver above. But it is hard to ignore the thunder of the hour looms, spinning their knot of hurrying time over the work world below. Gotta wait 15 days to do that again. Listen to the governor's request. Overseers wait to escort you to the governor. He has requested you. Okay. Brabazon must be self-sufficient. Without industry to justify their lighting, our fires will go out. We must have work. His brow furrows. The workers refuse to understand that they live so long as they work. That is not a threat, it's a fact of living here. They require hope. Give it to them. Not enough to stir them into revolt, but enough that the fires remain lit. Man, you are really sick. Fuck you. String them along just a little bit. Well, that's it for a little nice. Whoops. What did I just do? Closed out of something? Oh, I think I went back to here. Yeah, from the bit between back to the pre-bit between. The bit before the bit between. <laughs> Okay, so, tour time. 
Maybe the chores are different, so we use the unseasoned hours one. Let's do one of the ministry stamp permit ones. With the right forms, you can requisition hours. The tour guide can use those to ensure you remain safe. I'm curious if it's going to be a significantly different tour or what. The overseer checks over your permit and sets aside some Brabazon hours to be woven for you. She hands the group over to the tour leader who shepherds you all into a side room. The cloaks, that's the same. Receive a carriage clock. That's the same. Stay with the tour, blah, blah, blah. Mm, we got the rugs. Yeah, that's all the same. Admire them. I mean, I smiled at the workers before, and that didn't seem to do anything, but I'll do it again. Yeah, nothing there. Let's sneak away from the group instead of visiting the glass workers. This tour offers only those aspects of Brabazon deemed suitable for tourists. To see anything real of the place, you're going to have to explore unsupervised. The guides are focused on moving the tour along. No one notices you slipping away down an alley. Here we go, explore the true Babazon, port report, supplement the workers' meager rations, rejoin the tour. Right, I'm still limited by time. 